YouTube is now live. Uh, doing really good today. Doing really good today. Sunday Geyser. David Sweeney. Um, I'm a... <laughs> I'm up in flames tonight. All right. <laughs> Why it's so hot out here? It's it got on my shirt. <laughs> it's uh love your Sunday and your kids too. We love them too. How is Jade doing? Let me say it differently. Jade is healed, healthy, and whole. Amen. Chris Timmer, you're healed, healthy, and whole. Amen. All the rest of you are healed, healthy, and whole. It's just part of getting this thing all up and running. Sometimes we have lots of conversation, and then sometimes we don't have lots of conversation. It depends on how hard we got to focus <laughs> to get it done. <laughs> okay. We, uh, it's all good. It's going to be a good night tonight. Got a good word. Got good folks. And um, doing great. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Anybody sees Brother Tim come sneaking in, make sure you say, Tim, play us a, sing us a song. Amen. Scott Sherrill. Oh, hey, hey, Scott. You still out working, man? Good to have you here. It's good to have you here. Everything seems to be running along good here. FaceTube and U book and blog talk lesson. No, you're at home. Wow, that's cool. You got home already. That's a good thing. That is a good thing. And we're glad you're with us tonight. We're going to answer all your questions in one night. How's that for faith? Woo, that's some good faith. It's not even question and answer night. <laughs> Brother Dan Cottle's watching with us. Bless you, man. Hi, Dan and Gwen. Dave and Gwen and Dan and Gwen and Bill and Gwen and Steve and Gwen. And Gwen is, I won't say that. <laughs> Nothing. I was a bad joke and I didn't say it. So you'll never know what it is. I heard a really good joke. You want to hear a really good joke? I got a really good joke for you. There was a man who was severely afraid that kept having nightmares that something was underneath his bed. So I went to a Psychiatrist to get help or psychologist or whatever you call them. And um, the guy said, I would say after about six months, if you show up once a week for a couple hours, um, we probably ought to have you free. And uh, he said, uh, how much it's going to cost me? He said, $80 a week. He goes, wow, that's a lot of money. He went home six months later. He saw the psychologist, whatever that person is, at the store. And the guy said, hey, how come I haven't seen you lately? You never came back. He goes, well, my neighbor cured me. 
and the psychiatrist said, your neighbor cured you. How'd your neighbor cure you? He said, well, if you're scared that something's under your bed, cut the legs off. There's nothing under it now. Good joke. I saved myself so much money, I went out and bought a new truck. <laughs> Mr. Mike is here. Mike Tony's here. I just want you guys to know something about Mike Tony. All right. There were two Bibles in that bag. Yeah, Hold on. I don't know if you caught that fact yet. There were two Bibles. In that bag. And he paid fifteen dollars and ten cents. And he paid fifteen dollars and ten cents for two Bibles. Now I don't know what that Bible printing angel looks like, but he he's he's quite a guy. He's quite a guy. And and maybe Mike, you should have taken a picture of that Bible because maybe that's the most holy Bible. They just proliferate right in the room. <laughs> I'll tell you, every time Mike's going to look in, Mike's going to walk around and say, can I look in your bag? Just say to the woman, can I look in your bag? <laughs> They'll be like, what's wrong with you? Nothing. I'm just checking for Bibles. I'm checking for Bibles. <laughs> what a story he turned the water into wine he multiplied the fishes and the loaves you have a picture of one of them but not both yeah that that would have been the picture to have right there bro it's two of them um but what a what an interesting place for God to show up. Phyllis Raymond, welcome. Matter of fact, Grandma Phyllis K. Raymond, welcome. Good to have you with us, man. And Phyllis, I don't know if anybody said it to you yet since you've been there, but there was two Bibles. I'm likely to preach about two Bibles all night tonight. Because uh, I'm still living in that victory, brother Mike had. Yeah. What a what a what a what a what a what a testimony! If you didn't get to hear it yet, make sure you go to YouTube and watch it on YouTube. Because I spent till four thirty this morning oh my editing that program so that it would be short, so people could watch it. So if you don't go watch it, I'm going to have a, 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 a attitude with you because I spent a lot of hours on that YouTube video. And um, I edited it right down to the pledge, to the message, communion at the end. Uh, you can send it to anybody and say, listen to what our God has done for our brother and for our community of faith. It's amazing. Listen. January 1, God said, I am sending a tsunami of my blessing. Uh, if you got a picture of the exceedingly that God wants you to have, just pull it out and look at it right now. Just pull it out and look at it right now. Just say, exceedingly abundantly above this. Above this. Just, just, just do it. Put your hands on it. Get a picture of it. And say exceedingly abundant. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I got a browser here. Right here. Now, if you hear noise, don't anybody freak out. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven browser tabs open in this one page. Of the exceeding abundantly above I'm asking God for. Why? So I can pop this browser up and just take a look. And say, see, 
That's what my father said he's going to do right there. No volume. Come on, shut down. There you go. Oh, geez. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. There we go. Gotta be, you got to be careful opening up them extra browsers because <laughs> they might start a jamming. Oh, I got the volume turned all the way down. There you go. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. I... I um, I encourage you to say, Father, don't leave me out. Don't leave me out. I want exceeding abundantly above. Somewhere here I have a picture. Where to go? Oh, gee. Jesus, help this thing work right. There it is. There it is. Oh, my goodness sakes alive. That's what he said right there. It's pretty amazing. And Mike and Shannon, we're loving and missing you guys, too. Matter of fact, Kelly Dalkert, we're missing you, too. Girl, we're just missing you. I'm not making fun of you guys at all. I love you guys. I'm amazed at your ability to do what God has given you to do. I uh, I really am. I'm amazed at it. I think of a great missionary. If you ever need, if you're ever looking for a good read, down, download you a couple books by Charlie Studd, S-T-U-D-D. Charlie Studd was one of the most amazing um, missionaries at the turn of the 1900s. He was a missionary to China and to Africa and to India. And um, he was about as uh, rugged as you can find him. Listen to this statement. Some wish to live within the sound of a church bell or the sight of a chapel steeple. I want to run a rescue mission on the doorpost of hell. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. <laughs> huh? You look like you got lots of feelings for uh, for uh, Shannon, and we love it. We love it. You guys are amazing. I just wanted to get in on the love. That's all. I love you too, brother. I love you. Think about that. Some people want to live within the doorstep, within a uh, the shadow of the church, so it's all holy. I hope you're like me. I want to run a rescue mission right on the doorpost of hell, man. Wait, you get some crazy people. Um, Saturday night, all y'all got to see it. You got to see it. We spent five hours getting that guy born again. Say it with me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what goes on. We did the work. We did the work. And I appreciate you guys' help getting it done. Man, he's got a really good statement here. There it is. Well, I was going to read you part of this story, but I, I'm not on the same page I was on before. Uh Anyways, we'll read that another day. Are we ready, love? Um, yes. All right. I think I'm ready. Dan Cottle's with us. Good evening, Dan. Brother uh, John Wainer's with us over on Blog Talk Radio. 
So if anybody's bored and you don't have anything to do tonight, just run over there and hang out with John. Whoops. I think we're ready. I, I think I, I, I got to break this slow start thing. I hate these slow starts. Don't like this. Wow. 7.25 and we're still kind of putzing along. But don't worry. I go back in and edit this all out on Facebook, the, this beginning, and we get, a, we get a good crisp start. So if you ever send anybody to Facebook, uh, you get a good crisp start. And YouTube is up running, yes. All right. Let's rise. We'll make the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, honor our troops. Sing God bless America. We'll pray for this great nation. And um, then we'll get ourselves started in Jesus' mighty name. I'm like Mike. I don't have any idea what current affairs are current events are happening, but um, I was, I was going to make a statement. I don't want everybody to leave, though, so I won't make that statement. Because <laughs> it would have sounded political, but I'm not political. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm governmental. What in the world does that mean, Pastor? That means go back and listen to about January the 7th. <laughs> Somewhere back there I talked about it. We got a good group tonight. Mike and Shannon, Kelly Delker, Rebecca Smith, Phyllis Raymond, John Wayner, Brother Dan, Sister, Sister Leanne is with us. Amen. Sunday Geyser is with us tonight. That's a good night. Scott Sherrill's with us. I knew we had one more with us. Good, good to see you, Scott. It's good to have you with us. Shannon's like, let's go, Pastor. Keep wondering if that was for me or if that was something that she said to somebody else. I keep looking at that like, is she trying to hurry me? <laughs> I just want you guys to. Hey, Soon Yin's here. Hi, Soon Yin. Welcome all the way from Malaysia. We're going to have a good one tonight, Soon Yin. If you didn't get to listen to last night, there was two Bibles. Now, now, Brother Andrew, he took a whole VW bug full of Bibles across Checkpoint Charlie. Now, that's a big deal there. And Mike got to see two Bibles in the bag, and the guy at the border didn't get to see one Bible. Now, you explain all of that. That's that's interesting. That's how God's is. I forget that one missionary. What did he have? He had he had 100 Bibles in his suitcase. Oh, yeah. Showed up at the border of China, and he said, God just kept telling me. God kept telling me, I got to get across that border with these Bibles. So I said, I filled this big old suitcase. And of course, a hundred Bibles, that's going to be heavy. So he's got to have help. And he's standing at the Chinese border at the crossing going, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You know, they always make you open your suitcase up. And he said, the commander of that border crossing walked up to me and said, sir, let me help you with that big bag. Walked him over. Walked him across the line, said, have a good day. And down through the village he went and never even slowed him down. And he's like, oh, wow, there you go. That's our God right there. Amen, amen, amen. Did I say let's stand yet? Well, you started to get that way, but then you never really did it. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah, so Thank you, Mike, for your help yesterday. That's, yeah. that's amazing. It gives us a whole day off. And wow, does that ever make a difference in our spirit, in our soul, in our body? We don't usually get any more sleep. 
usually we usually get less sleep yeah. because of it, but that's because we're like, well, we can study that message, that one, and oh, we've been wanting to study that one and that one. And if one of them's really good, we'll study it about three times. I would say since Sunday at noon, we have probably listened to 15 different messages. But we got ourselves full. Now we're going to come over here and get you guys full. In the mighty name of Jesus. I apologize for the slow start. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Render your honor, let's make our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll have a moment of silence as we remember those who are missing in action and still serving today. This moment of silence is in honor of all of those who have paid the last full measure of devotion. It's in honor of those who at one point signed their name on that dotted line and said, I will protect this nation and the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. This is an honor of those families that have supported them in Jesus mighty name. This moment of silence will last for 21 seconds in honor of the 21 rifle volleys fired at the funeral of a fallen soldier. Render your honor. This moment of silence begins now. And now join me in singing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountain to the prairie. To the ocean, why with foam? God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet. And now, let's pray for the United States of America. Thank you, Father. That we have the ability to come to you in prayer, seeking your face, walking in your way, standing in the, the wonderful, amazing grace of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that even though you were rich, for our sakes, you became poor, that we through your poverty might be made rich, that we through the price that you paid, the sacrifice that you made, might forever 
have freedom and liberty in our lives. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. And tonight, right now in this prayer, and every day in every prayer, we stand in our position as ambassadors of the king of the cross of the kingdom of heaven. We stand as ministers of reconciliation. We stand as sons and daughters of the great God, Jehovah. Heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus because of you, Jesus. You gave us the, the perfect sacrifice and the perfect covenant, a better covenant with better promises. And we have availed ourselves to it by faith. And now we stand very boldly, very confidently, very determinedly in it as we pray for the United States of America. As in the days of old, of Solomon, on that day when they dedicated the temple, you said to Solomon, if my people who are called by my name ever go astray, if they will humble themselves and pray, and they will turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear in heaven, and you will forgive and heal their land as we seek your face. Thank you, Lord, in the New Testament. One person's sin doesn't curse the whole nation. Every person bears their own penalty. But here in the United States of America, the, the agreement, the unity of the church, according to Psalm 133, the commanded blessing comes. According to Ephesians chapter 4, every joint supplies causing growth in the body for the edifying of itself in love. And where two or three of us are gathered together in your name in agreement, it is done that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise, Jesus, in your mighty holy, awesome, wonderful name. Say this with me. God bless, God bless America. God bless America. Say this with me. God bless Malaysia. God bless Malaysia. Julian and Vamala's with us. Soon Yin's with us. Brother Tanvir will be here. Say it with me. God bless Pakistan. God bless Pakistan. Now I know that the day's coming when we won't be able to do that for all the nations. However, that's how serious we are. And guys, when it comes to a confession, look up, pick your face up, open your eyes up, and make it. Because an ambassador never stands up in front of a group of people and closes his eyes and then says, let it be known. And then he closes his eyes. He don't do that. Say it. I am an ambassador. I am an ambassador. A representative of heaven. A representative. <laughs> I can hear people. Well, what, Pastor, I was really wanting to pray and talk to God. All right. Let's do that then. You ready? Here we go. Father, thank you. For every one of these, these men and women who have fought in our nation or any other nation, and defended freedom and liberty. You said, Jesus, there's no greater love than a man would lay down his life for a friend. And we, the people of the United States of America, we thank you that these were willing to do it. Some, some served and their service was done. Some served and are wounded. And we call healing to the bodies of the wounded. We call healing to the spirit and the soul of those wounded in their spirit and their soul. In Jesus' mighty name, open your eyes and say this. I, I bind fear. I bind fear. I bind confusion. I bind confusion. And I loose faith and hope. And I loose faith and hope. Into every one of our troops. Into every one of our troops. Amen. Because 
those who are filled with fear, they need faith to come. They need hope to come to them in Jesus' name. Father, right now we pray that verse of scripture out of the book of Deuteronomy that says when they return, there'll be no shame and there'll be no guilt because they served you well. We speak this now over our veterans. You said in the book of Hebrews that by the blood of Jesus, our conscience would be purged. And our consciousness can be purged from bad memories. We speak it now in Jesus' mighty name. That in our life and the lives of our troops, their lives are free in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I declare right now, and each of these declare, there is no greater love than a man lays down his life for a friend. We declare right now that the same seed these families have sown, they reap that harvest. You said everyone who gives, it'll be given to them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Some of these people have paid a very dear price for freedom, and therefore they receive a hundredfold return. On that freedom seed that they sowed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we prayed in the name of Jesus. You said, everyone who gives up mother and brother and sister and father and house and dog and cat and goat and farm and anything else, for your sake and the gospel and America, is your keepsake. And they did it willingly. And now we speak blessing in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Open your eyes and let's bind this. Join me in this. Say this. I bind discouragement. I bind discouragement. I bind fear. I bind fear. Wow, we're after that tonight. That's the second time. Third time we've said that, isn't it? In all of our veterans, in all of our veterans from the sidewalk to the corporate room, from the sidewalk to the corporate room in, the in the name of Jesus, we declare life to these people. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the men and women of God around the world that might be in prison. Defending your name. In the name of Jesus, may their captors have to let them free. And may they all come to know you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And now, Lord, that was five points you gave us the other day. We speak unity in the United States of America. I bind division. You're bound division. And we lose unity amongst we the people. Lord, may we the people drop Republican and Democrat like a hot rock. And just stand alongside of each other. Staring at these people saying, oh, we're one. You're in, you're in a bad mess. We speak the spirit of unity. It's the place of the commanded blessing. Father, every politician that has been elected and went to Washington, D.C. on purpose to do good, we declare their efforts happen in the name of Jesus. We ask you for good politicians. Therefore, we now thank you for them. And we give you glory for them and give them courage. May every lying, cheating, conniving, thieving, corrupt, perverse politician be renewed. We know that's 90% of them. <laughs> May they all land in jail and there only be a few left because we got to have a new, a new election. 
and 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 like some more people in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I declare right now that you, God Almighty, defect and pretend our God, protect our constitution. All of the brave men and women who are the protectors, protect them. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guard, our special forces, Secret Service, State Police, the County Sheriffs, the City Police. In the name of Jesus, we expect you to protect the protectors. You said you'd give your angels charge over us to guide us in all of our ways, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. And now, last but not least, we ask you for the executive department. Jesus, you said in Isaiah chapter 33 that you would be our, our, our lawgiver. You would be our judge and you would be our king. And Jesus, we name you Lord and King here. Now help us get the right people in the office. Who believe in you, Jesus, in your mighty name. And in the words of our great president, Abraham Lincoln, we declare it again tonight. Help us, the living, to be dedicated to the unfinished work which these fought for and so nobly advanced. Help us be dedicated to the great task that remains before us, that from these honored fallen, we take increased devotion to the cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, and we highly resolve that these have not fallen in vain, and that this nation under God experiences a new birth of freedom, and this government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Long as the stars shine in the heavens, the angels said, and the dew descends on the earth, all the nations of the world standing against us could not overcome the great United States of America. And we, the people, stood up and together declared the word unity. And the angel planted the azure standard with a crown on it. And everybody bowed down and said, Amen. Amen. And the dark cloud rolled back off of America. And once again, bright shining light was right here in this great nation. And we give you glory for that. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen and amen. If you haven't read it lately, I would encourage you to go. Wow, we should have that on the website. Take a note for that. Wait, can you do that for me, please? George Washington's vision. Is it there? All right. If you're listening tonight, Elisa. We would like George Washington's vision. I have it. I, I'm surprised I haven't already given it to you. Maybe I have. I just didn't know. It. We welcome you tonight. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, you might say, Pastor, that's a little different kind of prayer. Well, here's what's going on with the prayer situation. Um, God has been instructing me that um, I pray like an ambassador. Everybody listen. <laughs> uh, an ambassador doesn't sit around wondering. An ambassador makes a decree, and the decree comes to pass. An ambassador is empowered by everything his homeland has. And what do you and I have from our homeland? Absolutely everything. And so um, when we do that, we got to open our eyes and make a proclamation as much as we make a prayer of intercession. 
We've probably made more than enough prayers of intercession in America, and it's time to stand up and make some declarations. And uh, God help us to do that. Brother Robert, we welcome you tonight. Thank you for being here, sir. Call you blessed. Call your house packed. When you get up in the morning, may all the boxes be packed and everything be ready. Amen. Put your angels to work on it. When is he planning on moving, Yeah, I don't know. When you're planning on moving, brother, we'll all send our thoughts with you. <laughs> everybody, yeah. everybody get a plane <laughs> ticket. We're flying to uh, Detroit, Michigan, and we're going to help our brother pack all the way from around the room. How much did it cost you to move, Brother Robert? Only about eighteen thousand dollars. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> now, YouTube is up and running good. Facebook is running good, and uh, Blog Talk Radio, of course, it always runs good. Brother John's over there. If you if you are doing something that takes your face off the video, you can't watch it. Hook up to Blog Talk Radio because. Um, Blog Talk Radio uh, is a pretty solid platform to be able to hear. I mean, every now and then it might break up or something, but I can't guarantee nothing to anybody. But the cool thing is um, it's audio, and you can just go. YouTube is about a minute ahead of Zuckerberg. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? And and uh, here's another cool thing, Mike. That when you get to why am why am why am you I? I don't know. UMI might be a good place to visit. You might want to check it out. Anyways, here's a cool thing, Mike. When you use your camera and you stream Facebook and YouTube, the screens are backwards from each other. Yeah, that's funny. It's very interesting. The pump jack on my sweatshirt is over here on YouTube and over here on um, Blog Talk Radio. I mean, on um, Facebook. And that picture is over there. <laughs> so you just don't even look at the picture. <clears throat> you look at that little eye right there. Welcome. We got a lot of good, a uh, lot of viewers with us tonight on YouTube. We welcome you tonight. We're glad to have you with us. Got a good word for tonight. Those of you who are on, on Facebook, thank you for being our anchor here and uh, helping us get accomplished what we have. Have I missed anybody, love? No. All right. All right. Now, last night, Brother Mike taught a powerful lesson. Um, very powerful. Uh, and it came from a personal testimony that he had from things that happened um, between you and he. <laughs> That's good, Gwen. <laughs> you could get confused even. <laughs> I don't know whether I'm working on a computer and a desk or I'm working on a machine. Hallelujah. Well, uh, the bottom line is after a little while, you just look at that. I, it's, I got a different thing, Mike. I got a little green light right there that just gives me that to look at. And you just kind of let the periphery go because you're going to jump in and go. And um, But I, I want to talk about Mike's message. And I'm going to go right into the word of God for tonight. <clears throat> and we'll do communion when we're finished. I am being instructed by the Father to do that tonight. Um, and, uh, you might say, why pastor don't know? Doesn't matter. When father says do this, we just say what? Amen. Amen. For those of you wondering what my shirt says, it says North Dakota, the hottest place on earth. Now it's a dry heat. <laughs> and, and, and I'm wearing this. I like this. All of a sudden I said, you know what? I'm going to wear that because. God said he's coming with fire this year, and there it is. There it is. That's what every oil well looks like out here. There's a flare on that. Every flare burns off enough gas every day to heat a home for a year. 
if you want something that'll frustrate you, that one right there will frustrate you. But anyways, back to Mike's story. Now, I'm not going to re-preach what Mike preached because he did a good job. Um, and I know he had some more verses. And um, if you just got to preach, Mike, and you can't get it off of you and you got to say something, you can call Blog Talk Radio and we'll go at it again. But I really want to talk about this provision point, And then we're going to go to our verse of the month for February. And it's going to, God wants us to put the two of them together for tonight. And when we get done, shout hallelujah. Well, somebody shout hallelujah right now. Hallelujah. Can I get an I love the word? I love the word. I, I figured you did. <clears throat> I tell you what, it's awesome living with a woman that loves the word. Because you don't have to beg them to get the mind blown. Oh, I just lost my comments. If you'll help me out, please. All right. <clears throat> Yep, thank you. Nope, done. Seriously? <laughs> it's back. There we go. Now I wanna I wanna talk about this. So let's go to Luke chapter five. Somebody somebody shout, I love the word. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Some of you are like, Pastor, hold it. You didn't do communion. I don't know how to act. Well. Um, this is how you act. Just stick around. We're going to do communion after a while. I don't know. I got to, I got to follow the leadership of the Holy spirit. And he was very specific with me on this. And so guess what that means? If he's specific, we're following the path. Grab your Bibles, hold it up. Let's make our confession. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I believe what it says. I am what it says I am. I go do what it tells me to do. Today I will be taught the word of God. And it will change my life. Because that's what it's designed to do. I receive it as a seed that is producing a hundredfold and more in my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Father, we just declare right now tonight, may, may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeeming. Take every lesson, every study, every class, every event, every situation from my life and minister your grace and your blessing and your love, the free gift of righteousness into the life of every person here so that we get finished with this night and, and shout, hallelujah, it was good to be together in the house of God with the brothers and sisters of the Lord and our lives are propelled, launched into the next place you have for us. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Say it with me. This word, this word comes, forth comes forth unhindered, unchecked, unhindered and unchecked by, any by any outside force because no weapon formed against us no against can us. prosper, and every tongue that rises against us, every that rises against us written, or spoken, written or spoken, we condemn it now. Condemn it now. That's, that's our inheritance, inheritance as children of the Lord. Of the Lord. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen and amen. Are you ready? Here we go. Luke 5, 1 through 11. Luke 5, 1 through 11. Just grab my resource here. So it was as the multitude pressed about him. Have you ever noticed that happened a lot with Jesus? Yeah. If you got something to say, 
the multitude's going to press about you. All right? To hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and he saw two boats standing by the lake. Fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. He got into the one of the boats, which was Simon's, asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught. What did he teach? He taught the word. Jesus was, is the living word. So the word spoke the word. How's that for a word? That's a word. <laughs> That's a word. <laughs> and when he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. The King James says for a draught, not a drought, a draught, which means a large catch. All right. Uh, Simon said, um, Master, we toiled all night and we caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. All right? So obviously, when Peter and the boys were on the shore and they were mending the nets after a full night of work with no benefit, right? They worked all night and caught double goose eggs. You know what double zero is? Double zero is double zero. That's nothing. They caught nothing. And yet Jesus had just sat in Peter's boat in the water. So obviously when Jesus said, hey, can I sit in your boat? Peter threw the nets in. Obviously. Because he had nets in the boat. He had a net in the boat to throw out. All right. So. He threw his nets in, out they went. Then Jesus said, now let's go catch some fish. And Peter's like, uh, you're the teacher? And that was a good message? I just fished all night. But something in that conversation caused Peter to say, um, but at your word. Brother Mike's message last night was, um, do the extra. Do the extra. Sometimes doing the extra is a big step. And you're like, woo! Uh, all right. Peter said, well, all right. At your word. And off he went. Verse 6. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish. And their nets, their net was breaking. I want you to notice Jesus said to Peter, cast out your nets, plural. And they had one net out, singular. Can you imagine what, what Jesus <coughs> would have done with two nets? Like, like the one guy said, every fish in the Sea of Galilee was trying to get inside that net that day. Why? Because... The master of all the fish said, over here. And guess what? They filled the net. And uh, so look at what happened. Verse 7. They signaled to their partners in the other boat. And they said, come and help. And they came and filled both the boats. So that they both began to sink. Guys, this isn't 15 or 20 fish. You got a five-gallon bucket full. Right. These are two fishing vessels that God says, oh, yeah, you're going to trust me? Watch. Yeah. And he filled the boat. <clears throat> Say it with me. Fill my boat, Jesus. Fill my boat. Fill it up, overflowing. How many of you let Jesus get your boat? Right down where you just think, man, we throw one more thing in, we're sinking it. Say it. Jesus, 
sink it if you want to. We'll get a helicopter and drag that baby to shore. <laughs> Wait, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying this. <clears throat> Brother Mike had a Bible multiply. I forgot to ask you, Mike, is what well, is this the same lady that had the meat multiply? I, I didn't catch that. You probably said it, but I missed it. So if you could put a message in there, brother, let me know about that. If this is the same lady. All right. But listen to this. That lady with two Bibles in her book, in her bag. She was doing what Peter did. I don't know what Mike's look on Mike's face was, but but Mike's look was probably just about the same. Can you imagine Peter when all of a sudden them nets started to tighten up? Peter, Peter knew what it was like to catch a, a drought of fish. He'd caught one or two in his lifetime. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Peter begins to feel the, the vessel starting to do that. Uh-oh, we got a load of fish. Yeah. <laughs> that that movement that's like, <clears throat> um, and he's like, Andrew. Uh, rock and roll, bro. And Andrew's like, uh, Peter, I think we should call the boys. Maria is now a stay home mom. Wow. Come on, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Hold it. Hold it. You got to call and tell wow. that story now. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hold it. We just. We just took two Bibles and a freezer full of meat to a whole new level. I might give Jesus a high five. Woo! Woo! Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Just pause for a minute. Everybody just say Sila. <laughs> listen, listen. Hey, here's the deal. Some of, you, some of you are new here and you're like, uh, what you guys so fired up about? Well, um, am I telling the story, Mike, or are you? <laughs> because I might I might not get it all right, but um, I'm going to tell you right now, it's a powerful story. Yeah, no powerful story. It keeps getting better. Just a powerful story. I was trying to re 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 re. I was trying to recount it to somebody the other day, and I'm gonna tell you right now. I couldn't tell the story right, Mike. But I just, I finally just said, "Well, their freezer was full of meat and it never ran out." Hallelujah. I mean, it only takes so long uh, 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 of, <laughs> of trying to tell somebody else a story. And and you get you give up and just say, well, it's just happened. And if you ever hear it, believe what they said. I'm doing my best. <laughs> Left and came back, no Maria. Wherefore art thou? Hubby got a raise and a promotion, whatever. And Maria is a stay-at-home mom. Wow. Come on, man. Come on, Jesus. Come on. We were a part of this. This ministry right here, community of faith. Uh got involved in that lady's life in Tulsa, Oklahoma with all of us sitting in our chairs saying, go, Mike, go. And, 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 and look what just went, just went, just went, and she came up. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Isn't that something? Isn't that just something? Isn't that just something? Phew. Oh my goodness! I I'm just well, glory, hallelujah! What are you What are you gonna do? Here's Mike being obedient to sow a tip. And 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 God just. Phew, Moves all over the whole thing. Gives the lady maybe $35 total. She goes and buys a freezer full of food, you know, on the top of the fridge 
a freezer full of food. You ready for this? So it's full with, with the money that Mike buy. Oh, wait. And some milk and eggs and other stuff. And then Mike goes back, I don't know, three years later or something. And we're going to get him to make a phone call. So it's going to be like, hey, 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 tell the story, right? Tell the story, right? Mike goes back a month later and the lady's still eating out of the same freezer of food. And she said, Mike, it's like I open the door, pull out some meat, close the door. And the next time it's still just as full. Say it with me. Water into wine. Fishes and loaves, two boats full of fish, two Bibles, and a whole freezer full of food. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. The same tip that led to coffee, cookies, and two Bibles. That instruction started with Maria. Yeah. Yeah. Maria's not there. And now he's got two, he's got coffee, cookies. And, and a Bible that made another Bible. There's a, there's a Bible-making angel in Mike's room somewhere. Get him to come to your house. Matter of fact, all y'all get him to come and bring you one of these Thompson chain Bibles. Yeah, amen. These are nice ones. Get the leather issue. When you talk to the angels, tell them you want the leather issue. Because it's a good. Wow, what a story, Mike. What a story. What a story. Peter fell down on his knees and said, my Lord and my God. And that's what happened in that situation right there with Brother Mike. Let me ask you, is it happening in your situation? In your situation? Every single one of us are growing in God. Are you growing in God? Maybe I'll ask the question. Do you feel like you're growing in God? Or do you feel like God's always after you and he's always going to punish you? We'll let that question sink in a little bit. Do, do you feel like father's always going to be on your case? Or do you feel like a child in which he is well pleased and you don't have to worry about that. He'll help you grow, but um, not going to be concerned. Amen. It's been about two months ago. Now I had a dream and uh, you might not be one that dreams much. But um, this dream woke me up because of the effects of it. And I'm going to tell you the dream, and then I'm going to minister from it about how do you view yourself and your relationship with God? Because I know how God wants you to view yourself. And you know how God wants you to view yourself, but many people don't. So don't, don't hang up too soon. You got to hear this. I even started early tonight by Father's instruction so everybody could be a part of the message. All right? Now watch. I was dreaming. I'm in a van. My mom's driving. My brother Joe is in the front seat. I'm in the second seat with a sliding glass door, you know, sliding, sliding glass door, eight-footer, double one, right on the side of the van. Isn't that something? Chris, um, if Facebook is going in and out for you, then run over to YouTube. Um, just my name, Sam Cottle, and you can find YouTube over there because um, who knows about Facebook? I don't know. I got good speed. I'm watching it. Um, and fall else fails, turn on blog talk radio. Somebody – somebody, um, uh, put in the blog talk radio number. That's where you just dial that number, pick up your phone and listen. Now, in the dream, we come up to a familiar corner, which is a half mile from where I grew up in the home place. And as we approach the corner, my mom's driving and 
these five guys walk out in the middle of that intersection. And about time they get themselves clean across the road, which is a through street, so you don't stop there. They stop and they turn and look at us like they're going to stop us, like you were having an old out west stagecoach situation. And um, I rolled the door open, stuck my head out and say, and said, hey, if you don't get out of the way, we'll shoot you. Now, don't know why I said that. I closed the door and said to my brother, Joe, you got, are you packing? Because <laughs> evidently I wasn't. I don't know. It was interesting. But about the time I closed the door and said that, a van rolled out behind him down under the intersection. And I woke up. And I'm like, well, that's an interesting dream. wonder what that means. And as I prayed about it, the Holy Spirit showed it, showed it to me this way. At very key intersections of your life, that means key points of intersection of your life, there are demonic spirits that try their best to stop you, limit you, hold you down so you can't enter in to where it is that God wants you to enter into. What are they? They're demonic spirits from your past, from abuse. There's a spirit that's connected to that. And then they're limiting spirits that are sent by the enemy because obviously in the spirit realm, they can see the glory of God and that we're getting ready to break into another level. And at that point, they may send out something. They can't stop you, but they can send out something to slow you down and distract you or disable you with fear. Now, what's the point of that, Pastor? Well, we, we just had a powerful miracle right in front of our eyes with Brother Mike. And now tonight he comes out here and tells us there's another one. All right. And how many of you are like me? I don't want Brother Mike to have all the miracles. I want some too. Anybody want to say it? Lord, give me a miracle too. Lord, give me a miracle too. Listen, I know that's how Mike is. Mike doesn't want to be the only one with the testimony. And if you have a testimony and you're willing to share it, well, shoot me, a, shoot me a message. I might just let you share it. Why? Because they help people. Yeah. Most definitely go to the testimony page on the Community of Faith Facebook page and, and tell the testimony in there of what it is that God is doing for you. I, I had a phone call today with uh, Christine Barkley. I thought it was awesome. And she said the other day, she was out shoveling snow. Hold it. Hold it. Did everybody hear that? Christine was out shoveling snow. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's a big deal. You might not know what that means, but for her, that is a really big deal that she's out shoveling the snow. That's a testimony of God's grace. And then... There was about um, the first week of, Mar of January something. It was my birthday. It was my birthday. Mm -hmm. I was, we were closing the, the program before my birthday. So the 11th of January. The program had gone extra long. We had communion. Could you get me some more coffee too? Thank you. You're welcome. You're a wonderful mm -hmm. And we had communion. And we're now into about, I don't know, three and a half hours, and I can feel the Holy Spirit saying inside of me, that person that you know that committed suicide went to heaven. I'm, I'm, I made that, I don't know who it is. I'm just prophesying. That person went to heaven. And, 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 and he said, and you don't know what went on once, once that happened. You don't know. And I just want you to know they made it to heaven. I'm just prophesying out of the spirit of God. Now watch this. I had forgotten that that had happened. 
with her. And she had she didn't witness it, but she was right there, the first one, their neighbor. And here's the thing, guys. That night prophesying that broke the power of that. And she told me today on the phone, it's never been back. The fear of it and all that stuff. It's never been back. Everybody said whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Here's the cool thing. When you and I walk with God, God moves in mighty ways in our life. Some of it is in your body. Some of it's in your mind and your spirit. And some of it's in your in your in your wages, your money. Some of it's in your relationships. Whatever you need God to do for you, watch God make it happen. And at some point, Brother Robert's going to give us a testimony about, about his house. Now, wait, we're waiting until he's done and he's in. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, it's these testimonies. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 says, We overcome by the blood of a lamb and by the word of our testimony. You got to have the blood to overcome. But it's that word of your testimony that continually gives you power to overcome again and again and again and again and again. And I'm going to tell you right now, God, God is wanting to do a very major thing in every one of our lives today. Now, let's let's throw this into our growth and development in God. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Somebody shout, I love the word. Okay, well, <laughs> when you get to Galatians 2, turn to Galatians 5, 1, and that is where we're wanting to go. It's Galatians 5, 1. Galatians 2 is a really good chapter. That's the chapter Paul's defending the gospel. He's telling them don't return to the law, but Here's the truth about the Apostle Paul. He went right in those guys' face on a regular basis. And then chapter 3, he starts talking about Abraham being justified freely by his grace. Galatians 5.1, look at this. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And do not be again entangled with the yoke of bondage. Everybody read it out loud with me again. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and do not be again entangled with the yoke of bondage. Now, you might say, well, that sounds like a pretty powerful verse, Pastor. It is. It's a real powerful verse because the Apostle Paul is saying, whom the sun sets free is free in deed. Now, I want you to get a picture of this again. We've just been studying it. And, and we're going to go off of what we've just been studying about the righteousness of God. And we're going to move from there and launch us into this month's teaching, which is the Father gives us the heavenly prayer language to propel us into that next level in God. Somebody say, shooky, shooky, shooky. Hallelujah. Like the one guy said, Eka mo shundai. <laughs> Watch this. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. All right, go with me to Romans chapter 5 real quick. Romans 5. You and I are going to start hitting Romans 5 all the time. Why? Because Romans 5 has five verses about being the free gift of righteousness. 
Now, I want you to see this in verse 15. The free gift is not like the offense. If by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Say it. I receive the free gift of Jesus' righteousness. Now, guys, you might say, Pastor, you just been on this. I know. But it's literally the most important doctrine for you to learn. Because it is the very foundation of everything else you're going to add to it. I've got to get you to the point where you can honestly on the inside of yourself say, I am living in the righteousness of God from Jesus that Father made me. Listen, some of you are like, uh, I, I can say that. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Here's the revelation of it. Do you pray like that? Does your prayers reflect you're an ambassador? Like the sparrows out here in the middle of that cold snow the other day. They, they hopped right up to the sliding glass window and was looking right in at me. <laughs> Open the door. That's, it looks warm in there. Can you guys let us in? We won't mess anything up. We'll just fly around a little bit, poop on a few things, and leave. All right? Anyways. You got to be able to get this down inside. You can't do anything to get this righteousness. Except receive what Jesus did. Once you get it, you get to function as an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. You get to function as a minister of reconciliation. And you don't even need Bible college training. Just so you know, I have five years of Bible college. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. You can sure learn a bunch of stuff there. But until you leave that campus and go out and face the real world, it's just stuff. It's just more stuff. It'll help you down the road. But the reality is, is you got to get this message and as soon as you get this message that I've been made by God, the righteousness of Jesus by accepting his blood and his broken body, that's all I got to do. And he totally makes me into whatever else I am. You know, I don't know if you have one of them Dog doors, Shannon. I've often wondered what keeps a coon from coming in. Nothing. Nothing. No, never going to be a dog door out of my house. <laughs> I live where there's mountain lions. What if they smell bacon? Wake up in the morning and you got a cat as big as the couch laying there. How you doing? How'd you get in? We just let ourselves in through the little hole there. <laughs> Now watch this. <laughs> it's tempting the food chain a whole new level. <laughs> Can somebody pin a post for me so I have access to some comments again? Hey, look at there. I got me some comments. I declare right now Facebook quit messing with stuff so I can actually see what's going on. Nope, just carry in groceries. And he just strolled on in like he lived there. <laughs> he, he probably does. <laughs> now, Pastor, we got to get back to this. I know, I know. Listen, 
we're here because it's it is so it is so absolutely important that you get this foundation doctrine. You didn't just get quote unquote saved. You didn't get fire insurance. This is a whole lot bigger than fire insurance. First Corinthians chapter three. Watch this. Watch this. This is really good. Oh, hallelujah. I just love this. This is awesome. This is all off of Mike's testimony of two Bibles. First Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Pastor, that sounds a little serious. Yep, it's like real serious. It's serious. Because there's a doctrine out there today that says it doesn't matter what happens once you're born again. And that's just not true. God would be unjust to require you to be holy. I mean, look what it says. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. God would be unjust to com command and demand of you holiness and then not be willing to make it happen for you. Yeah. Paul said in one of those verses, we are sold under Sin. That's messed up. Wait. Whomever, whomever, who's it? Huh. Whomever the Hoosiers are. That's what I was saying. All right. <laughs> whomever you yield yourselves servants to obey, that's whose servant you are. Sin unto death, righteousness unto life. Say it with me. Sin will not have dominion over me. Sin will not have dominion. That's Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Now watch. Listen, this is all about the, the Bibles. This is all about the five guys in the corner. This is all about Peter's thing. This is about. God doing the most amazing thing for you in your life you have ever seen. But see, if if you and I continually have a sin consciousness, when we when we start praying for other people, we're going to hesitate. Because the righteous are the are as bold as a lion. Those who have fire insurance and don't know how to use it, they're not usually as bold as a lion. All right, Pastor, explain fire insurance. A get out of hell free card. I've been born again. I don't go to hell. It is so much bigger than that. And that's what the Father wants you to see. Here's why he brought this to us tonight. There's many people last night that when you heard Mike say two Bibles, like, like one got created right there in the bag, right? Wait, Mike, hold it. Who is this Mike guy? You know, you know how people are. Who's this guy think he is? Wait, wait, what? Is he like Paul or Peter or something? Who do you think you are over there, Mike Tony? Um, no, he's not Paul or Peter. He's Mike Tony. And he's connected with God Almighty. And he just believes God's going to do what God said he's going to do. And you'll read about him in the book of Acts. <laughs> and when you get to heaven, the big book of Acts, he'll be there. Yeah. And, 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 and Shannon's believing that he'll be translated soon. So 
Work's done. <laughs> Mike's at home in bed, sleeping with him. Back to work. Good job, hon. Good job. Keep your faith up, babe. I got my faith with you. Keep it up there. No, see, come on. Come on. This is supposed to be an everyday occurrence for every one of us. Yeah. Yeah. This is. If, if that doesn't frustrate you just a little, then get your frustrator fixed. Because it frustrates me a whole bunch. Yeah. The apostles in the book of Acts, they didn't go a day without amazing things happening. Read, read Jesus' life. Jesus, Jesus. Well, let's just read it. Let's let the Bible say it. Go with me to John. The book of St. John. Verse 20. No, no. <laughs> Chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. Come on, Mike. That's that's the thing. That's the thing. And 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 Mike's and those of you on YouTube, Mike said, I don't care if anyone ever knows my name, but I want everyone who crosses my path to know his name. And and I heard Amen. I heard Bill Johnson say this the other day, and it just rang my bell, man. Matter of fact, the side of my head is still sore from where they rang it. We have people come to us, like Brother Chris Timmer, and they need that healing touch of God. Guys, yeah. Chris Timmer needs a serious healing touch from God. And this is my statement. They came to, and met me, Jesus, and then met me instead of you? No. No. I don't want them to meet Sam Cobb. I want when you come here, you meet Jesus Christ. Amen. I want when this group of believers, all y'all, says, life and life more abundantly that it reverberates down through the internet. I don't know if any of you saw that video today on Facebook of the earthquake. That was a messed up deal. That was a pretty serious earthquake. And then people's tables are shaking and the chair, the one person's chair is jumping right up off the ground. It's like, ah, oh, that's pretty serious. And, 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 and they didn't run out in the street. They laid down on the floor. I, I don't, I've never been in one, so I don't know. But no, see, I want, I want when you meet me, I want you to walk away changed by the Jesus that's been in you. Because whether or not you have anything to do with Sam Cottle, that don't mean anything. Sam Cottle knows Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I got, that. I got, I, I got that warm honey. As soon as I said that. Sam Cottle knows Jesus Christ in that. Sam Cottle has a relationship with his father. I love the power of the Holy Spirit. And when you meet me, whatever you need in God, you should be able to find in me. I should be a living testament. This should be going on everywhere we go every day. Say it with me. I want it all. I want the exceeding, abundantly, above in every situation. I do. I want to be the guy that walks up to the gas pump where somebody's filling gas up. And the Holy Spirit says, just go pump the gas for him. And you just keep pumping, 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 pumping. And it fills the whole tank up. And the tank don't run out for a week. I'll tell you a story about this. Hallelujah. You guys like good stories? Listen to this one. I gotta, I gotta get Brother Terry to come on here and tell it. He, when Brother Terry Mize comes on here and tells this story, believe him, because he's telling it the right way. But I'm not telling it to you the wrong way. I'm just giving you my best shot at it. Him and his wife are living in Mexico as missionaries. 
I don't know. He's either leaving, living on the east side and went to the west side, or he was living on the west side and came to the east side. He woke up one morning and God said, get your wife and the kids and drive over there and bless that pastor. And he's like, oh, Lord, that's a long ways in our station wagon. And I only got this much money for gas. He said, I didn't ask you about your money for gas. I didn't ask about any of that. I need you over there blessing that preacher. So he said, we took off. We got in the middle of nowhere and I ran out of gas. And I said, what are we going to do now? And the Holy Spirit said, I want you to grab that jug and go down there in that creek and fill it up with water. Can you imagine standing there in your natural mind thinking, oh, really? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You can meet this man. I know this man. I hugged his neck and shook his hand. Got pictures with this man. He took that jug, filled, filled his tank up with water. And he said, what am I doing now? He said, start the car. And the car started and ran all the way to them people's house. They were getting ready to quit the ministry. They were so discouraged. And that's something. And drove all the way back to his home before he had to have more gas. Wait, everybody say it. Running on water. Running on water. <laughs> I know. Some of you are like me. Oh, Jesus, please don't ever make me do that to my nice car. <laughs> Wait, there's another cool story about it. A couple weeks later, he's in Houston at a preacher's conference, driving the same car. The gas gauge is low. Between the meetings, he's like, he, I said, I drove by a gas station, thought, I'd have fell out. Nah, I drove all the way across Mexico on water. I ought to make it through at least another service, and he ran out of gas. And he's like, hey, Lord, why did I run out of gas? He said, well, when you were down there, you needed it. You got money, and that's a gas station. Stop and put some gas in it. <laughs> Say it with me. I got to be able to produce Jesus. I've got to be a living testimony of who he is. Some of you still view yourself as always going to be getting in trouble by God because you've been taught the doctrine of for the rest of your life, God's going to have to just correct you and discipline you to get you to do right. I got a question for you. Whose righteousness did you get? Jesus' righteousness. Did Jesus have to be corrected by the Father all of his ministry? You don't ever find one place where it says and Jesus went to the mountain and the father corrected him you ready I'm fixing to challenge you to believe this book hold it up and say this is the bible I believe what it says I'm going to tell you something it's time to start believing it because he didn't give you an inferior nature. When he made you a new creation, whose spirit did he put in you? Spirit of God. You ready? Everybody listen. Take some notes. Listen to this. So which do you have to have to be taught? Persecution, tribulation, sickness, disease, lack, poverty. Which of those do you need to teach you the ways of God? Not one of them. You have the teacher. Hello? Hello?
Let's read John chapter 20, verse 30. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples. He did it where they could see it, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that believing you might have life in his name. There's only 21, there's only 21 uh, or 23 miracles in here in the book. Wait. Jesus lived 1260 days in his ministry. So you and I know that he did more than 21 miracles in his time on earth. Yeah. And every time it says he healed them all, how many miracles do you think he did that day? Oh my Let me just see if that pulls up. In my, um, all right, let's try the phrase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, about fifteen. And they're not all, he healed them all, but, um, <clears throat> there's a bunch of them that he healed them all. Matthew 12, 15. He healed them all. Luke 6, 19. He healed them all. All right. Wow, this is interesting. It's a good study. Somebody ought to run into this one. <laughs> Jesus healed them all. And and here's what we got to realize. Hold on. We've got, we've got the same Jesus on the inside of us. We got the same Father on the inside of us. We got the same Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Who is the teacher? The Holy Spirit. Whose nature do you now have? Hold on, hold on. I had to hit my own run because you quit pitching to me. <clears throat> See, we don't have that old nature. You ready? Ezekiel 36. 26. I'm going to take the stony heart out. And I'm going to give you a new heart. And I'm going to cleanse, purge it with water by the washing of the water of the word. Jesus said, unless you're born of water and the blood, you, you can't be in the kingdom. They stuck the sword in Jesus' side and what came out? Water and blood. See, what you and I got to, what you and I got to get is Literally, we are literally functioning on this earth as ambassadors, not as born again, free from hell people. Say it with me, ambassador. I want you to go to John 21, 24 and 25. This is really good, Jesus. Thank you. Good word tonight, sir. Want to lift your hands to him? You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy, Jesus. You are the living word that was made flesh, dwelt among us, but you are alive and well, full of grace and full of truth. Hmm. Wow, what a message. 24, this is the disciple who testifies these things. Which, and there are also many other things that Jesus did. Which if they were written one by one, I suppose 
that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. How many of you know that is a whole lot of, if you don't know how to spell it, H W H O L E O L L O T T A, whole lot of. That's a whole lot of things that Jesus did. And he says, greater things than these will you do in my name because I'm going to the Father. But wait, not with your old nature. With his paid for by stripes and blood nature and righteousness. <laughs> this is really good, isn't it? Yeah, where were you at this time? I was in uh, John 21, 25. I'm now back to Romans chapter 5. Be of good cheer. We still got to get the 1 Corinthians 2 yet. I'm now in, in Romans 5, 16. Watch this. The gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. Say it, just as if I never sinned. Never sinned. Remember, guys, if you're having trouble with, these, with this technology, dial 516-387-1459, and you can listen to this message right over there with Brother John. John won't know you're there, but at least you're sitting next to him in the, in the building. <laughs> Love you, Brother John. Say it. It's a free gift. free gift. What is it? His righteousness. It's not free gift. You get born again. I mean, that, yeah, it's the case. But literally, you are born again with his Pure, holy righteousness. The Father said, I'm going to make my temple inside of you. Well, his temple is never going to dwell where it's unholy. It just is not going to happen. Remember, remember, remember. <laughs> <laughs> you just, the old tongue gets going. Woo! Exodus 20, 26 through 33, I think. Exodus 33 is the story of Joshua going into the tent of meeting. And staying. Yeah, 33, 11 through uh, uh, 23. Where did Moses put that tent of meeting? Way outside the camp, away from all the strife, away from all the confusion, away from all the people. Why? Because that temple had to be in a place that could be holy. Wait a minute. You and I are the temple of the living God. Bless you, Julian. Love you, man. Love you guys. Think about this. He didn't say be holy and then walk away and say, get it with your best shot. He didn't do that. He didn't do it. Why? Because he knows you and I, we don't have any ability to generate holiness on the inside of us. It's impossible. You were born of the sin nature. So you must be born Again, <clears throat> Romans 5, 17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned. That's a royalty term. Through the one, how much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness will reign in Life through the one Jesus Christ. Some of you have said, 
I don't know, man. Uh, I'm a shika mama. Even Baptist people speak in tongues when you say, go lay hands on them and get them healed. Even the Baptists will speak in tongues. But what if they don't get saved? What if they don't get healed? It's not you doing the work. Peter and John said, silver and gold is not going to do you any good today. What, what you need, we got. His name is Jesus. Rise up, walk. They grabbed him and stood him up. See, all of a sudden, what's going to happen is this revelation of his free gift of righteousness and the impact it has actually had on your life so you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I, I haven't sinned. You can just look at your mate and say, you know what? We don't sin. Guess what? Ain't no devil in hell can touch you if you don't sin. Now you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now his power can come in a manifested form on the inside of you. One of the worst things you can do is have a mixture with humanism or feminism or any other isms and mix it and call it God. All the Eastern religions are spiritualist. Witchcraft, all of that stuff. You can't mix what we have with that wicked spirit. It don't work. That, that nullifies. That stops the flow. Why? Because there's only one flow, and that is the beautiful Holy Spirit of God. One person said, why am I so scared in a horror flick? Because you're fellowshipping with the other spirit when the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. And what you just experienced is the Horrible, awesome fear of the Lord. Don't do it. I don't know how to stop, Pastor. I do. Get filled with the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and there you it won't ever be a temptation to you again. Never. How can you say that? Because you'll be filled with the Spirit of Christ. And that other spirit is absolutely diametrically opposed. <laughs> People say, well, but God, God understands when I sin. I, well, you drag him and the Holy Spirit and Jesus right through the sin with you when you do it. Because they don't come and go from you. Don't, we can't be there. We got to get the revelation that says, wait a minute. He has given me a free gift. What is it? His righteousness. <laughs> you don't have to be righteous in your own strength. You will never be able to be righteous enough in your own strength. Pastor, this is a revolutionary teaching. Yep, it sure is. And it's the very baseline of your Christian life. Any man that's in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And all things. What is included in all? all. Oh. That was almost a 90-second jump. 90-second lady jump right there. <laughs> Did I scare you? <laughs> Didn't mean to scare you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. It's <laughs> what I get for throwing thin men at her. All right, here we go. <laughs> Romans 5, 17 again. I want you to get this. And then we're going to run over there to 2 Corinthians. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one how much more then those who receive the abundance of grace how much grace abundance 
where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That's right down there in verse 20, Romans 5, 20. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When we get this, then you now become invincible. Why? You don't, there will be no desire for anything outside of the beautiful, amazing presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Wait, not even confusion. You'll fight it with all your strength. You really will. Let's go down to uh, verse 20 and 21. Romans 5, 20, 21. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, and it did. Because if you were guilty of one, you were guilty of them all. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So that even as sin reigned in death, grace might reign through righteousness, which is a free gift that he gives you and you become. Oh, whoa, Jesus, I become it. I, I don't have to. I don't have to earn it. You can't buy it. Look at it. 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he, God, made him Jesus who knew no sin. Say it with me. His righteousness is perfect. He, God, made him Jesus who knew no sin. His righteousness is perfect. To become sin for us or the sin sacrifice. Because he didn't know sin, so how could he become it? He didn't do it. But he became the sacrifice for him. He was the perfect sacrifice, according to Hebrews chapter 9. Better, better. Watch. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. <laughs> you literally become the righteousness of God. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I don't know what else to say, but you literally get to become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And how you reach out and receive it. Pastor. Do you know how difficult that is? No, because you're already born again. You already did it. <laughs> um, it's not very intellectual, sir. No, it's not. It's not. It's available for a kid. First Corinthians chapter two. Go here with me. <laughs> My driveway looks good from where I'm at. All right, Brother Chris, hallelujah. I missed that one. Totally off on what that means, but it's okay. I'm just in the lag somewhere. First Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, Declaring to you the testimony of God. The one verse said the Greeks were always, were always trying to find another great piece of knowledge. For what? To impress somebody? The kingdom of God is not about impression. Verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness. I was with you in fear and in much trembling. When Paul was in Corinth, there was some stuff happened, man. 
My speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in a demonstration of the spirit and of power. Why? That your faith would not be in the wisdom of man, but your faith would be in the power of God. Why? Well, everywhere you go, you're, you, are the new, you are the new creation in Christ Jesus, and you literally are the power of God everywhere you go. You're not Jesus. You're not divine. <laughs> you're, you're not the Holy One. You're just operating in his righteousness with his nature and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Listen, listen, listen. This is what gets you free from your past like that. What? Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Quit digging around in that. What are you going to find back there? Yuck. Um, junk. Um, Paul called some of it dung. That's what you find back there. Stop digging around in it. It's stinky. It's nasty. Quit. Just accept his righteousness. Realize he puts all your sin in a pile and then the blood hits it and it evaporates. It's gone. It's obliterated. He'll never bring it up. It'll never be imputed against you. So any of it that shows its face, you just say, shut up. You're just a pitcher, crush. Shut up. You're just a pitcher, crush. It, if you play in the trash, you're going to smell like it. You ever lose something in the trash can, have to dig through it to find it? Oh, Jesus, I hate that. Dropped my ring in there one time. Are you kidding me? That was the one that had all of the most horrible stuff in it. <laughs> Verse 4, 1 Corinthians 2, 4. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in a demonstration of the spirit and of power. Why? That your faith would not be in the wisdom of a man, but in the power of God. Why? Because as soon as the newest believer understands the power of God that they're already operating in as an ambassador, as a minister of reconciliation, as an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus, as soon as the newest believer grabs that thing, they're going to go out and rip and tear the devil. And they ain't, you're, they're going to be like, where did you come from? Uh, Jesus. He's in here. Verse 6, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Verse 7, this is our verse of the month. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. This mystery, being able to speak in a heavenly language, this mystery was ordained before the ages, a long, way before time. And it was ordained for our glory in this age. Pastor, you don't get any glory. Well, huh. Somebody should have told the Apostle Paul because the Apostle Paul missed it. Because he said that mystery was ordained before the foundation of the earth for our glory. And there's people say, no, you don't need that. Well, huh? Could you imagine if Paul, Saul, just lived in the end of Acts 7 and the beginning of Acts 8, where it's written, he consented to Stephen stoning. He would have had a life of sorrow and guilt 
instead of being the demon kicking soul winning Bible writing God possessed man, he was caked to be. I don't know what cake to be is, but I like the sound of it. You can tell, you can tell what Mike's got on his mind. I, amen, brother. German chocolate. Coconut. We call that coconut. German chocolate with coconut kind of frosting. Hallelujah. I think we're going to the store in a couple minutes. Called to be. I like caked better, Mike. I think caked and called are like close because you got to bake it in order for it to work. Think about it. That's a powerful statement. Think about that statement. Because he would have been a murderer. He would have been a persecutor. If if Paul would have stayed and, and like he said in Acts 7 and 8, he was a, he was a horrible man. Dragging women and children out of their house. He was a horrible man. Yeah. He was no different than Osama bin Laden. Except he was doing it in the name of God, um, Jehovah, which was wrong. And at least, at least bin Laden didn't do it in the name of Jehovah. And that's why on the road to Damascus that day, the anointing showed up. Jesus and I listen now you can't prove me wrong but I I I I can't prove it's right either but that's what I my deal is Jesus was standing there in the road and Paul was walking in the front of the company and Paul got close and Jesus said what you got boy <laughs> and down he went huh and Saul of Tarsus had enough sense to say, who are you, Lord? And Jesus said, right answer, you get to live. Because Jesus showed up on that road that day to, to destroy the yoke that was hurting him. Oh, you just got to turn there. Mike's got me all stirred up now. It's all right. We just got to read it. I want you to see this. You got to see this because this matches the message. This is so awesome. Acts chapter 8. Look at there. Just call in and preach the rest of it, Mike. Watch this. Acts chapter 9. And let's go uh, verse 3. Acts 9, 3. As he, as he uh, journeyed, he came to Damascus. And on the road, suddenly a light shone around him. From heaven. Heaven was on earth. And uh, he fell down. I think if Jesus pushes you, you're going to fall down. And the voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Look at it. It's, it's, it's uh, capitalized. Jesus didn't say, why'd you kill Stephen? Jesus said, you're messing with the body, boy. Ephesians chapter 1. Come on, go quick. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 23. Which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus showed up that day defending himself. Hey, dude, quit messing with the body. You're going to die. <laughs> He's like, Pastor, that's not our Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's our Jesus. He's the he's a man of war. He's the captain of the Lord of hosts. Look at look at look at look at. Let's go over. Um Acts 26, 12 through 18. Watch. While thus occupied, as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission. From the chief priest. He's not going alone. There's a whole mess of them involved in this. At midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. 
And when we all had fallen to the ground, he gives a little more detail in 26. We all fell down to the ground. I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus spoke to him in Hebrew. He spoke to him in a language he knew. Because Paul said, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. 28, uh, 16, 15. He said, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Huh? Wouldn't that just make you mess your britches? Yeah, yeah probably would. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. If, if 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 you're in your study and Jesus comes in, you're going to be down on the face in the carpet probably for a little bit until he says, come on, get up. We got to talk. But uh, you you ain't going to, the, the, as it says in Daniel, the loins will not be loosed. All right. That's what it says in Daniel. His loins were loosed. All right. Can you imagine? This guy's killing his, his body. Saul just realized, I'm persecuting Jesus. And Jesus showed up to say, uh, no, you're not. No, you're not. 16, rise, stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose. To make you a minister and witness both the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I got a word for you. Paul could have said, who do you think you are? And he'd have died right there on the road. People say, oh, no. Paul was designed to preach the gospel and write the whole New Testament. Uh, unless you violate God. Because Jesus showed up that day to take Paul out. Saul, not Paul. Saul of Tarsus out. Say this with me. I got that same Jesus in me. Some of you, some of you sometimes during the prayer time at noon have looked at me and thought, and Pastor, you're 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 being harsh. Um, well, there's probably been some times I was harsh. I don't know. I'm never gonna be harsh on the innocent, but on the fools. Who curse our God? I will laugh at them like my father does. Because he laughs. Those who have. It's a bad thing to say. But I don't have no name. So. But those who have sinned. Against the Holy Spirit. It just makes you. That's a tough thing to say. Isn't it? Yeah. Guys there ain't nothing you can do. Except say, Jesus, get them out of the way. Because their heart is cold and callous. They don't care. They have no fear. They, they're dead. Yeah. They're dead. Walking around in a body. Jesus succeeded. Saul was taken out. Saul died that day. Yeah, that's good. I love where it says, after the scales fell from his eyes, he immediately preached the gospel. Yeah, immediately he did. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Paul was educated. Yeah. Paul knew the law because he kept it all. But immediately he preached. Why? Because he was made a new creation. Old things were passed away. And all of that law and prophets now clicked and said, hold it. A new heart he's going to give me. And it's going to be a heart of flesh. And he's going he's gonna to wash it with water. And he probably jumped and shouted, thank you, Ezekiel. Because I just got the new heart. Paul's the one that wrote the new creation verse. Paul wrote it. Somebody ought to shout glory be to God. And think about it. Father didn't just get you. He didn't just wash you. He purged you. And Jesus made you a new creation. And the Father 
made you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't, you can't take those words out of the Bible. They're there. And they're there for you and I to say, doggy, look at that right now. Jesus, look at that. And then just walk away. This power source of God that at any moment's notice will say, I rebuke you, devil, come out of that person. Some of you have said, well, pastor, how can you be that bold? Because the Jesus made righteous are as bold as a lion. Amen. Say it with me. The Jesus made righteous. Because you can't do it, neither can I. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age knew it. For had they known it, they wouldn't have, number one, had they known this wisdom, this mystery, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus at all. They would have loved him. The wicked ones wouldn't have done it because that's what gave us all the power. That's how dumb the devil is. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. We want Barabbas. All that was devil words. It's all devil words. And, and uh, Jesus died straight to hell, man. And he just stood there, you know? Can you imagine Jesus in hell with perfect righteousness? Jesus was born again from hell back up to here <laughs> with, with the keys of death, hell, and the grave, having nailed the enemy to the cross, making a public open shame of him. That's Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Say it with me. I am, I am the, righteousness of God the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Good night, Sonny. Love you. Kick us on blog talk and you can hear us while you fall asleep. When we shut it off, the phone just hangs up. <laughs> Love you. Verse 9. As it is written, I has not seen Ear has not heard, and it's not entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. Except that God has revealed all that to you and I by his spirit. Say it. I get to see, get to see what no other eye has seen. What no other eye has seen. I get to hear get to hear what no other ear has heard. I get to understand what nobody else did because I walk in the spirit. That spirit fills you, Romans 8, 11. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead fills your body. You don't need persecution. You don't need fear. You don't need sickness. You don't need disease. You don't need poverty or lack to teach you anything. Those are all the enemy's weapons of death. They're not teachers. You will learn, but the teacher is the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. Get it. People fight this message all the time. Well, I learned something when I went through. Well, yes, you'd learn something. You're going to learn something everywhere you go. But the teacher is the Holy Spirit. Do you think God calls the devil one day and says, well, that guy needs cancer because he just ain't learning from me. So maybe you can teach him something. No. No. 
No. But if all you ever did was get saved fire insurance and you don't realize the recreated spirit that you became is the very righteousness of God, you won't ever see that. And those old doctrines will make sense. Well, I learned something. Well, hello. Hopefully what you learned was from the spirit because that demon's trying to teach you you're going to die. Can I get an amen? Just make sure when you scream, it's, it's slowly. Because <laughs> now you got me jumping. Got that 90 second jump on. This is good stuff tonight, isn't it? Guys, literally, every one of us are going to end up with these testimonies like this. Every single one of us. This is the year of faith, finances, fun, and Father's fathomless love. This is the year of it. This is the year. And guess what? You and I are going to take what we have here and put up a tent. And take this doctrine, having never been together before as a whole body. And take this message and walk into a tent. And the glory of God's going to fill the tent. See, I say that and I got this longing. My, in the inside of me, I got this longing saying, Jesus, Jesus, help us bring the manifest presence of God down. Not a show, not a staged event, a tent of meeting where where God in his awesome, mighty power, people get out of their cars and are healed out in the parking lot. They're, on their way to church, demons come out of them. Woo! Say it with me. Show us where and show us when. Show us where and show us when. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those of you, this is my close. Those of you who are still struggling with the truth of the Holy Spirit. Number one, take the word struggle out and put the word I'm learning of the Holy Spirit. You have a pastor, I don't speak in tongues like you guys. It's not about tongues. It's about being filled with his spirit yeah. and out of your belly flowing rivers of living water. If you quit worrying about tongues, out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water, being filled with the spirit of God. The prayer language of the spirit is going to just come automatically. You can't stop it. Well, I guess you can. But if you stop it, it's, it's going to because, be because you seriously resist it. Because out of your belly flows rivers. Out it comes. Just get in his presence. Read this chapter out loud. Slow. Slow down. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 2 out loud. Do it every day. Just read it out loud. Two or three times. Wait. How much do you want the spirit of God in your life without measure? I had a year in my life, I read this chapter almost every single day, most days, two or three times in a day. Because I was determined to get the revelation. And faith comes by hearing. hearing and hearing by the work, will of God. Hopefully during the five week stint when I'll be home, just heard I'll be working locally for five to eight weeks this summer. I'm not sure Shannon can handle me that long. At one time. Oh, well, she probably can. We're not sure you can handle. Well, I didn't say that like that. 
That's awesome, man. It's awesome. Ready? Everybody, let's pray. Thank you, Father, for a wonderful word tonight. And you just keep taking us in. You keep taking us in. As the old song, take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of a lamb. And yet you say, hold it. I tore the veil just walking. Come boldly to the throne room of grace. No more hesitant. No more fear. You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You ready? Say with me again. Say, take me in. Take me in. I choose to see this. I choose to see this. In every bit of this. And walk in it every day. Because this is the power of God unto salvation. Everywhere I go, everyone I meet, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Mighty name. This is really awesome. Mike got a Two Bible testimony, refrigerator full of meat testimony. He got a coffee and cookie testimony. And now he gets to be home all summer where he gets to ride his motorcycle Woo! with his wife. How big of a testimony is that? <laughs> Harley's going to get some miles this summer, bro. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And you and I are going to join together as a powerful powerhouse team and transform a community somewhere. <laughs> Ride to the meeting on a hog. I like that. I like it. I like it. I like it. Well, it's communion time. Let's take communion. First Corinthians chapter 11. Actually, I want to go to Luke 22 first. I'm enjoying reading this out of Luke. Luke chapter 22 is the actual event when this happened. And that's verses 14 through 23. Hey, Pastor Rick, welcome. We love you, man. Luke 22. I want to read this because I want to get the picture in here of what Jesus did with the disciples. Verse. Actually, I'm going to start with verse 7. All right. Came a day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. So they said to him, where do you want us to prepare it? And he said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the home, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large furnished upper room, and there make ready. Interesting. Very interesting. This is Jesus Christ of Nazareth teaching his disciples how to hear the Father's voice. Brother Mike went to the bookstore, and Father said, not only that, but you buy the markers, and you buy the communion. And then you come out with a T-shirt. And Mike gives the 10% and God paid the 90%. Amazing. Ends up on his 
sowing verse. I mean, do you guys see the level that is? It's the same level as this right here. Amazing. Say it with me. I choose to be led by the Spirit of God. Verse 14. I'm not glorifying Mike. Mike's got to fight his battle like every one of the rest of us. Amazing stories. When the hour come, he sat down, the 12 apostles with him. He said to them, with fervent desire, I've desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until the fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. Wow, isn't that something? For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes again. How many houses did the Passover happen in it, in Egypt? Every single one of them. Every father was the priest of his home and prepared the Passover lamb. So why would Jesus change it that you can't take communion in your home? He gave you a new covenant. You don't even have to have a lamb. That's a powerful revelation right there. 19, he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And the, truly the son of God, man goes as it has been determined, but woe to the man by whom he's betrayed. You notice Jesus didn't say anything in there of how limited this was supposed to be. I, I, I serious, Mike, that's, that's serious revelation. Serious. And if they couldn't make it to the temple, what were they to do? Sacrifice that lamb. Wow. Hello. Anybody home? Knock, knock. Who's there? Knock, knock. Jesus getting real when this is there. Verse 26, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. 26. For as often as you eat this bread and as often as you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work until he comes. 28, let a man examine himself. You got to do that. You've got to do the introspection. You got to look at yourself and say, where am I at? But wait a minute. If you're walking in the, if you're walking in the presence of God and in the righteousness of Jesus, you're going to be able to look at yourself and say, clean before the Lord I stand. Who can ascend to the hill? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. And I just got to wash again. I love it. 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. This is our tradition around here. We pray the prayer of salvation, rededication, or just a prayer. Of hallelujah. I've been born again. <clears throat> I've been washed in the blood. I am a new creation. I could start singing right now. Brother Mike was singing last night. You did a great job. You did a good job, brother. Let's pray the prayer of salvation. No matter who you are, pray this prayer in faith with us. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I know I need Jesus in my life. I know I need Jesus in my life. In every area. In every area. Even all the dark ones. Even all the dark ones. According to John chapter 1. According to John chapter 1. When I believe in you, Jesus. When I believe in you, Jesus. And I receive you, Jesus. And I you give me the power to become a child of God. And I believe in receiving. Do this. Say, take all my sin. I receive all of your righteousness. Washing me white as snow. Filling every part of me. Wow. 
Ah, huh. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word. Pray, of God. Pray in my heavenly language. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer mm -hmm. every day. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Uh, listen, I know there's people that's connected. That when you prayed that prayer, you just start speaking in tongues. How much you should get my life? And they're like, oh my, I be you, I'm in that old moment. Oh, God, oh God. And you try, don't stop it. Let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Why? Because it's it's how fast God Almighty recreates you and fills you with his Holy Spirit. He's more willing to give you the Holy Spirit than you even are to ask. Whew. Glory be to God. Mm -hmm. Now, that was the first time you prayed that prayer. We want to welcome to well, you. Well, 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 my wife will now talk for me until I get my tang <laughs> untangled. Welcome you to the kingdom of God. This is us. Welcome. You found us. It's cool. Greatest thing you ever did. You just changed your life completely. In that one prayer, you went from darkness to light in one prayer. You went from fear to faith. Bam, one prayer. Just bam, that fast. You went from your sin to Jesus' righteousness. Wait, and he he doesn't hold, impute a single sin against you. You're all forgotten. Wiped away. Wiped away. Gone. Say it with me, G O N E, gone. You went from being a mere earthling on this earth, just bopping around, to now you become adopted into the family of God. You're born of God. You are an heir of God. You are a joint heir with Jesus. He makes you an ambassador and a minister of reconciliation that fast. Because there's people all around you that need you. That needs you to bring Jesus to them. All of that happened in <laughs> that simple prayer we just prayed. Listen, I've been born again since I was 12 years old or something back there. And every time we pray that prayer, I get washed again. I love it. Welcome to the family. They put my email address, they put the website in there. I want you to eat, send me an email. And say, hey, Pastor, I uh, just want to let you know I just got born again, and I am fired up about it. You might say, hey, Pastor, i never seen anything like this before in my life. I got this question. That's all right, too. You might say, hey, Pastor, I think you all what? It's all right. Send me an email. Most of all, I want to help you walk with God because that's my place on this earth. Our website has this communion prayer where you can pray this every day. I, I recommend you do it. Even at your house when we're not with you. Every one of us now carry God. Therefore, you have the right to commune with him anytime you want. Amen. Like anytime you want. You can take communion with all your meals if you want to. If you have sickness or healing or, or sickness or a disease in your body, I would recommend you take communion with every meal and you read all these verses and you rejoice in what God did. You ready? Pray this, pray this prayer with me. We're going to bless the elements and receive them together. Because I can preach for an hour right now. <laughs> ready? Father in Jesus' name. Father in Jesus' name. I bless these elements. I bless these elements. For this time of communion with you. For this time of communion with you. Jesus, you were wounded. Jesus, you were wounded. For my transgression. For my transgression. You were bruised. You were bruised. For my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement. The chastisement. For my peace. For my peace. Is on you, Lord. Is on you, Lord. And by 
your stripes. And by your stripes. I am healed. I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. From your body. Jesus. From your body, Jesus. In the body of Christ in my community. In the body of Christ in my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's receive the bread together. Jesus' broken body. We receive it, Jesus. The perfect lamb without spot or blemish. Better covenant with better promises and the perfect sacrifice. We thank you. And now we lift up the cup of blessing. The blood of Jesus. Pray this with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation with you, my father. With you, my father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin has been placed in remission. Has been placed in remission in my life in, every day. In my life every day. <laughs> I've lost my place. Oh my goodness. So have I do that. In my life, everything. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I overcome. I overcome. Jesus, help me. I, I, listen, pause. I just had this picture of a lady. Receiving communion in the tent and a demon coming out of her. Wow, I apologize <laughs> that I got lost where I was at. I just like, I don't even know where I am. We overcome. All right, you ready? By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things have passed and away. all things have become new. And all things have become new. <laughs> By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The pl every plague. Every plague. Must pass over. Must pass over. And cannot be on me or my family. And cannot be on me or my family. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come, boldly I come boldly to the throne room of grace, room of where, grace I grace, where I find grace, mercy, and help for my assignment every day by the blood of Jesus and the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony I, overcome I overcome by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren is cast down in my life. Cast down in my life. And there is no more condemnation. And there's no more condemnation. My conscience is purged. My conscience is purged. My robes are made white. My robes are made white. I will always be. I will always be. The glorious church. The glorious church. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. When you come for me. When you come for me. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. I really like that little quick vision. Yeah. I saw us in the tent taking communion and a demon come out of that lady. Hallelujah. How many of you getting fired up about this tent meeting? <laughs> Say it with me. Do it big, Jesus. Do it big. Do it big, Jesus. Do it big. 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 Now, all of you that are with us, make sure you copy and paste these notes. These ladies have very diligently um, taken all of these verses and put them in a line for you. Exactly how we did this study tonight. Um, 
I really like it when they do this because um, it uh, it gives you the ability to study them in the exact line that we're teaching. And if you go back to study this message again, which I recommend, um, you'll be able to go to the YouTube uh, video and open up the notes and there'll be a timestamp that says teaching. Click that timestamp. Tonight it's going to be about 59 minutes. Maybe it's 102 or something. It'll be a little blue number. They'll say 1-02, whatever it is. And that when you click that little blue thing, it'll take you right to that spot in the message. It's a pretty cool thing YouTube has going. And you can study this again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Should we sing? The blood that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountains and it flows. To the lowest valley, the blood gives me thanks from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountains. And it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Now, I want everybody to pray for something. Because I'm working right now on finding a way for us to have some worship time right before we go live. Where all of us can join together and have worship. Now, Facebook don't let you do that unless you got your own live band. So, any all y'all that's got a live band, all y'all come on out now. You hear? And help us out over here. Can you can you um, pin a post so I can copy them verses? You could if you want. Uh, so this is my deal. Just keep praying with us. Say, Lord, show us how to do it. Because when, when God shows us how to get it done, then we can lead the way in this. And what we'll do is right before we go live every night, maybe 15 minutes or something, we'll put on some, some praise and worship music. And uh, crank it up and make it happen. And what's cool about that is uh, it, it changes your heart when you come in. It prepares your heart. It slows down the day, focuses your own spirit, and it gets you ready. Uh, as of yet, we tried to do it last night. Last couple nights on um, uh, Zoom, but that didn't work right yet. Doesn't mean we won't get it. It just didn't work right yet at that point. And so you just keep praying. You ready? Closing verses. My prayer. This is the prayer that I, we, <laughs> that we, us, pray over you. Okay? Because we pray over you guys. And we pray over your family, and we pray over your dogs, your cats, even your chipmunks, Shannon. We pray over that now, too. And, uh, you you know, we pray over everything that concerns you. You know, Brother Dan's got a semi. Sister Dave, Sister Dave, Brother Dave and Sister Gwen have a business. And, uh, you know, just different ones. But I'm like running all over the nation and then getting to be home on his Harley. How cool is that? 
Hallelujah. I'm going to get a Harley while I'm home with you, Brother Mike. We'll ride around. We'll go Harley riding all day, and uh, we'll be tenting all night. Name of Jesus. Ephesians 1, 15. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being flooded with enlightenment, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance? Where is it? In the saints. What is it called? The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This just comes together, doesn't it? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Not a little devil, do you? Toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, seated him at the right hand of the Father, heavenly places, fire above all principality, fire above all power, fire above all might, fire above all dominion, fire above all strength, fire above every name that could ever be named, not only in this age, but in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him Jesus to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Say it, fullness and I'm filling. I'm the fullness and I'm filling. Verse 14, 314, for this reason I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Jesus, I see it. That he would grant you, yeah, you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with all might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you being rooted and grounded, not in a root of bitterness, in love. You may be able to comprehend with all the saints. All the saints are supposed to get this. What is the width and length and depth and height? To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen, amen. and amen and amen and amen and amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Now you have started all over again. And I haven't had communion or new covenant worship yet. Anyway, I get to laugh at your jokes all over again. Well, I don't know what to tell you, fellas. But it never hurts to study what I say twice, probably. Just grab that little red dot and slide it all the way over. Love you guys. I see Brother Tan Beer's here. Yep. Brother Tan Beer Body. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless our dear brother, Tan Beer Body. And Nassim. And Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Fady, Terza, and Joy. All of them. We bless the major and the minor prophets. Bless Long Reach Ministry. Bless them with partners right there in Pakistan. May they have a group of people, a, a group of partners that support them 
beyond anything they've ever dreamed. Amen. You said it, exceeding, abundantly, above all they can ask or think. May the manifest presence of God fill their home and fill their life. Father, may it be like days of old when, when our brother walks down the street, that because of the glory of your presence in him, people just fall down and give worship to God Almighty. And, and revival breaks out all over that place. In the name of Jesus. Bless Sun Yin. Bless Julian and Bamala. Bless all our brothers and sisters here. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Matter of fact, bless Pastor Chuck Eberline. It is his uh, birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor Chuck. And Brother David Flory's dad had a stroke. Let's pray for him. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask for the exceeding, abundantly above all that we've ever asked or think, and we call it done right now. Everybody say right now. Right now. In my life, in Pastor David Flory's life, and I forget his name. Pastor David Flores' father's life. He's a pastor. We bless him with health. We say life and life more to you, abundantly to you, Mr. Flores Sr. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Healing to you, Chris Timmer. Healing to you, Audrey Van Gessel. Healing to you, D. Healing to you, Helen, Helen, and healing to you, Joe, in the mighty name of Jesus. And my dear friend, Carrie, healing to you. Jesus, mighty name. Is that it, love? Yeah. Till we see you again, which will be right here tomorrow at noon. Just making sure we got everything done. Everybody get a copy of the verses. If you don't have the ability to copy and paste, screenshot it. And um, that way you got those verses and those references. I just got stuff happening everywhere. I'm sorry, I got lost. What was I saying? Anybody know? <laughs> we were being done. <laughs> yeah, um, Rebecca, just so you know, Facebook is going crazy tonight. I got blazing speed, but there's a problem in it somewhere in Facebook. Hey, Julian and Bamala, he was able to be with us. We love you guys. Yeah, they were we love you guys to the core. And some bananas. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank you all right that's it till we see you again this is what we say every time we come here we love you and god, god loves, loves you. you and jesus, jesus is, is lord, lord.